So I am once again in the ILSI Workshop Jupiter server, and I'm going to go over a little bit more about markdown language. And when we introduced cells within a notebook, we briefly talked about what markdown can do. And I'm just going to give you here a cup of, couple of the um, ways I use markdown the most frequently when using a notebook. Um, there are also advanced more advanced markdown um, syntax, and we can go, we'll go over that later in the course. And so for now, I have this notebook I created, and I haven't run any of the cells. And what I'm going to do is I want to go over headers, line breaks, creating lists with markdown, and then bold and italics. And this will just give you some um, basic ways of formatting your text to improve the uh, way your notebook look, looks. So once again, Markdown is a markup language that adds formatting to text. And so for example, you can make text bold or italicized using Markdown syntax. And I like to compare this to what you can do in a um, something like Microsoft Word, where you can format your text using either some keyboard shortcuts or with icons in the toolbar. However, here we're going to actually type out syntax, and that's going to be interpreted when run through Markdown to format the text. And so, for an example, in this first cell here, I have some syntax here that's going to be interpreted. And so you can see I have this hashtag here. I have these dashes here, which are going to create bullet points. I'm using these asterisks to either bold or italicize some words. And then I have this syntax here for inserting an image into the cell. So when I run this, it's now been interpreted through Markdown. And you can see that we have a header, we have some bullet points, we have bold, italicized, and we see that image. And that image is the toolbar example of what I was talking about that allows you to format your text in Microsoft Word. Okay, so let's go, let's start with headers. And this pound key will allow you to add headers to your notebook. And the pound key or hashtag is on your number three on your keyboard, and so you enter that by hitting Shift-3, and it's important that you put a space after that hashtag. And so what I'm gonna do is I have this little um, button here I'm gonna push, and this allows me to collapse or uncollapse cells under my header. So you can see right here it says three cells are hidden. Okay, so use the number sign or hashtag to make headers of various font size. And so the more hashtags you use, the smaller your headers become. And by making them smaller, what's also happening is you're creating subheaders. And when I run these, you'll see what I mean. And you need to make sure that you follow the hashtag with a space. So I have an example here of, you don't want to squeeze it all together like this. And we'll see what happens when I try to run that. Okay, so now I'm going to run all of these cells under my header. And so you can see that the subheaders are getting small with the number of hashtags. And then you can also see that when I did not have a space after my pound or hashtag, it did not translate um, appropriately to what we were trying to get. And the other thing you'll see that happens when you use headers is if you navigate over to your sidebar and hit this icon that is your table of contents, your headers are creating a table of contents for you. And so my first header, if you remember this um, Markdown Basics was my first header and it had a pound key here. So that is on this side, my first header. And then what we just created is this series of headers and subheaders. And the subs come underneath of your primary header in your table of contents. And again, when you use headers, you can collapse your, your subtitles um, and cells under that header um, to make your notebook more compact as, you, as your notebooks get bigger and bigger. 
And the other thing you can do is use this to navigate your notebook when it gets really long. So if you want to specifically go to something like um, a header that talks about your data, you can navigate directly to there, or to a header that navigates you to your analysis, you can go directly to there. Okay, so I'm gonna collapse that. And now let's talk about line breaks. So when you're just typing, um, for example, if you're writing something to explain your project in your notebook and you want to hit return and start on a new line, you need to add two spaces at the end of the line. So you can see here I have one, two spaces, and then I hit return and started this next line. And if you don't include those two sentences, when you run your cell, it's not actually gonna form a new line. Okay, so we can see what happens here when I've included the two spaces before starting a new line. And here, I have started a new line without those spaces. So first I'm gonna run our, our second header here, and then I'll run this. And actually, the example was here. Um, I didn't hit the two spaces. So let's take a look at that again. So here is where I did not put the spaces. So here has two spaces afterwards, and here has two spaces afterwards. And so again, what happens is if you do two spaces and return, you get a new line. If you don't, after you run it through the Markdown interpreter, it stays on the same line. So if you're writing a lot of text and you want to start a new line, you just want to remember to use those two spaces. The other thing you can do to avoid that is to use lists, because lists don't require you to use those spaces, because you're using something like numbers or bullet points. And this is quite easy. The only thing you really need to remember is that space. So you can create a numbered list. For example, here, you would put one and a period and a space and then write whatever you want to follow that number. Hit return and do your next number and you can continue with that. If you want an unnumbered list with something like a bullet point, you can use a dash mark with a space and in the same way, follow that with your text, hit return, and do another dash mark. Okay, so you do not need the two spaces for your new line in a list as you do when using something like a paragraph format. Okay, so I'll run these. And you can see that we now have a couple different lists here, one using numbers and one with these bullet points. And so the last syntax I'll go over is making things bold and italics, italicized. And this we use the asterisks. And so the asterisk is above your number eight. So you hit shift eight. And if you want something in bold, you'd put two on either side of either your word, or you can do it on an entire sentence or fragment, multiple words. And to do italicized um, formatting, you just use one on either side and the same thing. So let's go ahead and run that. And you can see that we now have bold and italics.